Well, hello. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Coffee with Stephen. So this week's blog is entitled, Don't Mess with Security. Um, while Sandy and I uh, and Cheney and two of our friends were in Vegas, there was a story about a Walgreens security guard up in Hollywood that ended up shooting uh, ostensibly a homeless guy who um, <clears throat> was basically trying to rob the store. Um, now, uh, evidently, there was some sort of an altercation. Um, according to the, uh, the news story that I cut and pasted and put inside the, uh, the blog, the, we'll call him the victim, ended up running away from the security guard and the security guard ended up shooting him in the back. Um, now, as of this writing, apparently the district attorney's office has chosen to prosecute this case as well as a civil uh, lawsuit being uh, levied against Walgreens. Um, notwithstanding the facts of the case, because quite candidly, we've seen this in a number of officer-involved shootings, the initial facts as they're presented oftentimes don't end up being the actual facts that wind up in evidence because there was a lot of hyperbole and everything else are, are oftentimes, to be absolutely blunt, because there's a lot of money or potential money involved, um, these things try to get litigated in the media as opposed to in the courts, and some of the things that you read about may simply just not be true. So not everything taking with a grain of salt, just looking at the basic facts of saying a, an armed security guard shoots a shoplifter in the back while the shoplifter is trying to escape or flee. Um, that goes to a question that a lot of CCW holders ask on a fairly regular basis, and that is at what point during the commission of a crime is a CCW holder authorized to use deadly force? And I've said this probably a thousand times. I'm going to use this blog as an opportunity to say it again. You can only use deadly force when it is objectively reasonable to believe that there is an imminent likelihood of death or great bodily injury. We only, we exclusively use deadly force for the preservation of human life. We never, ever, under any circumstances, use deadly force for the preservation of property. And we certainly don't use deadly force as a means of punishing somebody for their egregious behavior. Okay, those types of deadly force events are, in my opinion, tantamount to murder, okay? We only use deadly force for the preservation of human life. Now, if we're to accept the facts as they've been presented without any other affirmative defenses or anything like that, if in fact the deceased was trying to escape that Walgreens and the security guard shot him in the back, that is absolutely an illegal act. There's no question about it. There's a number of reasons why it might not exactly be the way the facts present themselves. Um, you know, oftentimes during the commission of a crime, somebody breaks off the attack as shots are being rung out. And in fact, especially in a volley of fire, somebody doesn't instantly, you know, uh, sort of bleed out on the first round. There could be an ongoing attack and the, you know, assailant can turn his body mid attack and end up having multiple rounds that hit past the medial line that would appear as though he were shot in the back. So we've, and we've, you know, we've seen this happen numerous times. So I'm not prepared to sit there and say what the security guard did was wrong. It, it may not be the case, okay? But just as a, sort of an academic teaching point, it made sense to use this as sort of an example. So anyways, read the blog, um, see what you think. If you have any questions, or you want to comment on this, you can always email me at steven at artemishq.com. As always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. And above all else, stay safe. Until next week when we have coffee again, be careful out there.